Darlington absolutely delivered. Once again, Chase Briscoe walks it off and Tyler Reddick talked about doing some unthinkable things inside the race car. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Darlington Raceway delivered once again. The Southern 500, a staple on Labor Day weekend of the NASCAR calendar, was absolutely phenomenal. Off the bat, I'm going to give this race probably a 93. This was a great race top to bottom. Yes, we had a car go out there and absolutely dominate. We had a shock winner, uh, but was in contention all night. We had a couple different incidents. We had good racing. We had tire strategy. We had tire wear. We had throttle management. Everything you could want out of a race you had on Sunday night at the Southern. 500. I was watching from afar. I had to watch on my phone. I was at a fundraiser because sometimes in life, not everything revolves around racing. But when I opened my phone up and saw that Martin Truex Jr. and Ryan Blaney were out of the race three laps into it, I was like, what in the heck am I missing tonight? So just recap the race. Let's get into it real quick. Start of the race. You have Martin Truex Jr. get looser than a college freshman on their first weekend. On the bottom collects Ryan Blaney as he gets up into the wall. Their night are done after three laps. Just not an ideal start for Martin Truex Jr. One of NASCAR's longest races of the season was going to be a long night for Martin Truex as he had to sit around and wait to find out if he was going to make it into the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs or not. He does not have a win to fall back on. Spoiler alert, he does make it in as the last driver to qualify for the playoffs, which start next weekend in Atlanta. After that, you had Bubba Walls. He's got Air Force on his car. They dominate the skies. He was dominating early in this race until Kyle Larson remembered, oh yeah, I'm Kyle Larson and this is Darlington. And he took the lead. And then it became the Kyle Larson show forever. The entire night was the Kyle Larson show. He led 263 of 367 laps. The guy went out there and absolutely dominated on Sunday night, but he didn't walk away with the trophy or the flag or any of that, which he definitely could have used. Then late in stage one, you have Tyler Reddick, and it's the first bit that we get to hear of Tyler Reddick, and he starts talking about how he's feeling upset in the race car. He requested Tums. He said he's got an upset stomach. He's not feeling great. Okay, this is a storyline to keep track of. Things would get so much worse after that. But the end of stage one, Kyle Larson wins a stage, his ninth stage win of the year. Bubba Wallace is second. Bubba Wallace came into this race on Sunday night needing to win or needing to have a huge Huge points day and Chris Buescher not have a huge points day. Finishing second, that's the second best that he could do in that stage. That is a major points gain for Bubba Wallace. Then in stage two, it was the Kyle Larson show starring Kyle Larson because the guy went out there and just dominated stage two. As I said before, he was the car to beat on Sunday night and stage two was no different. I also noted in my notes that Jeff Burton says athlete as athlete and it kills me every single time. It's like when Denny Hamlin says frustrated instead of frustrated. Athlete is just... I, the way that we used to mock people for being like, oh, they're a math elite or something like that. Jeff Burton is out here calling people athletes kills me every single time. But you also have Tyler Reddick and his crew discussing what is happening inside the race car. And his team asked him for clarification, like, how are you feeling in there? Are you throwing up? And he said, listen, I'm throwing up. I'm shitting myself. I'm just going through it right now. Yeah, I'm throwing up. Shitting myself all of it. And in the moment, everybody thought that was actually happening. <laughs> it's like, listen, that car is a, it's a hazmat scene at this point. You take that car, you put it in one of those medical bins in the hospital, you burn it, and nobody touches it ever again. If that's what's happening inside that race car, uh, that's that's vile. You don't want that. But hey, credit to Tyler Reddick for sticking it out and going through it. He's trying to take pills. He's trying to take Tums in there. Somebody give him some Pepto-Bismol. I don't know what he needed in that car. They tried to hand him some pills, but they were too small and he dropped them down in the race car. That had to be the most aggravating thing ever. It's like when your key falls out of your pocket and gets stuck down between the seat and you're like, oh my God. My hands are too big to fit down in the seat over there. Now Tyler Reddick's dropping pills everywhere, which that sounds bad, but their pills for an upset stomach. Kyle Larson went on to win stage two, his 10th stage win of the season. And then in stage three, it was once again, the Kyle Larson show. And why I keep talking about Kyle Larson leading, what was happening behind him was still very interesting. You had a lot of passing on track. You had a lot of battles. You had a lot of good different tire strategies going on as well. And it seemed like this is going to be Kyle Larson's day. He was just going to cruise off to victory here. Don't speed through McBee, but it dominate the state of South Carolina, almost like Old Dominion did on Saturday. That was until Carson Hosevar decided to spin out on the bottom by himself and really spice things up. Then with 46 laps to go in the race, Todd Gillen is underneath Chris Buescher. Buescher on the outside. Uh, Gillen 
Gillen on the inside. Gillen comes up on corner exit, and Busher's just not dealing with this, right? He dealt with this nonsense back in the spring when he and Tyler Reddick got into, into their little spat, and on corner exit, he just turns down after Gillen makes contact with him, turns Gillen on the backstretch right there. He's just not putting up with it. On the ensuing restart, Bubba Wallace stayed out on old tires. He only had a separation of one or two cars behind him, and then fresh tires, and he got eaten alive like he was swimming off the coast of Amity Island. It was a horrible, horrible decision by that team, and I get why they made that decision in the moment, but it did not pay off for that 23 car. Josevar then brings out another caution because he just really is like, oh, I didn't, I didn't spice things up enough there. Let's go ahead and do it again. Then on the ensuing restart, Ross Chastain stays out on old tires because he just wants to be the main character of the story, apparently, but that set up what would proved to be the pivotal moment of the night. Going down the backstretch, you have Ross Chastain leading Kyle Larson and Ty Gibbs battling for second side by side. Chase Briscoe in fourth. He just absolutely licks the stamp sends it off into turn three, passes both of them on the inside going three wide, and then also clears the one car of Rasha saying to take the lead of the race. And you're like, oh my God, is he about to steal a victory here? Like he's Harrison Burton from a week ago. Walk it off like he's Jeremy Mayfield in 2004 at Richmond, not the other stuff that happened with Jeremy Mayfield, and lock himself into the playoffs because that would be absolutely monumental for he and that Stuart Haas racing team. Well, with 24 laps to go, you have his teammate, Josh Berry, decides to try to send it three wide up the middle there and ends up getting ping-ponged around. Rex collects himself, Noah Gragson, Austin Dillon, Bubba Wallace, Chris Buescher got a little bit of it, and just an all-around bad night for Bubba Wallace. His championship hopes were ended right there. He would not qualify for the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Unfortunate for he and that 2311 team, Chris Buescher put himself into a bad spot right there as well. And for Josh Berry, he was running top 10 all night. Looked good. Um, just tried to go three wide. Denny Hamlin on the bottom. He tried to shoot the middle. Did not work out for him. Then on that final restart, Kyle Busch puts on fresh tires. And he is absolutely, as the broadcast said, coming hard through the team, which I absolutely know NASCOM is going to clip and put onto Instagram. And he did. He was, he was coming through that field pretty fast. Got all the way up to second. And then just could not get to Chase Briscoe. Reminiscent of the 2020 battle that they had in the Xfinity Series at Darlington as well. Kyle got there, but just couldn't get all the way up alongside him to try to side draft him and pull him back to him. Chase Briscoe ends up winning the Southern 500, his second ever NASCAR Cup Series win. He gets Tony Stewart's number 14 car back to victory lane, gets a victory for Stuart Haas Racing in their final season. 10 races from now, 320-ish people are out of jobs. Obviously, some of them will transition over to the Haas factory team side of things, but that has to be a huge, huge momentum boost for that company and just... I, I can't imagine what it means for them, which is awesome. Chris Buescher's night, he was trying to point his way in, would have pointed his way in if Kyle Larson would have won this race. And instead, or Chris or Bell, Instead, Chris Buescher is on the outside. He does not qualify for the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. He misses qualifying for the playoffs essentially by one one thousandth of a second. The closest finish in NASCAR Cup Series history back at Kansas when Kyle Larson beat him to the line. Uh, that is the deciding factor of Chris Buescher being in the end of the playoffs or out of the playoffs. And unfortunately, he is out of the playoffs. Kyle Busch also does not qualify for the playoffs. He comes up just short after, you know, once again, running second in back-to-back -back weeks. But hey, that RCR turnaround has been pretty impressive impressive up to this point. Who is the regular season champion? Tyler Reddick, who would pick it up. He did not pee or poop inside of his race car. He got out and clarified that after the race. He wins the regular season championship by one point over Kyle Larson, who spotted the field an entire race when he missed the Coke 600 and still only missed out on that regular season championship by one point, which is actually really impressive. Unfortunately, he didn't get those 15 playoff points, but still really impressive. He takes an eight-point lead into the playoffs over Christopher Bell and a 13-point lead over Tyler Reddick. Should be an interesting playoffs as it's shaping up now. Um, Kyle Larson getting that extra 15 points would have really opened up the gap for him. But hey, I mean, eight points is still not the worst thing in the world there. So overall, I really enjoyed this race. I know some people will say like Kyle Larson led too many laps. There weren't enough cautions, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not sure what exactly people would want out of this race, but it had everything I could ever ask for in a race. It had multiple different strategies, tire wear, throttle management. You had natural cautions uh, that, you know, didn't seem too forced. You had drama playing out there at the end. You had a guy in Chase Briscoe who drove the race of his life, if we're being completely honest. Yeah, he only led like 27 laps on Sunday night, not anywhere close 
close to the 263 that Kyle Larson led, but he was still in contention. He ran top five, probably top three for a majority of the night uh, when you go back and look at it. And the guy performed when he needed to, which he absolutely did, because after he signed that Joe Gibbs racing contract to replace Martin Truex Jr. in that 19 car next year in 2025, he has looked abysmal at times. You're like, this is the guy that you wanted to sign? This is this guy? All right. I mean, we'll see. But hey, Joe Gibbs got to meet Chase Briscoe's parents for the first time ever in Victory Lane and uh, said, yeah, we'll be doing this a lot more. I'm not 100% sold on that yet. We'll see how he does uh, next year. But for Briscoe, huge win for him. Mitchell, Indiana got a shout out from Lee Diffie on the broadcast. Um, you know, hey, back in 2020, he was crying. Uh, after the race, after he and his wife had a miscarriage, he comes back, wins at Darlington in the Southern 500. He and his wife are having twins next month in October. Life comes at you fast sometimes, and who knows what type of turns it's going to take. But for Chase Briscoe, could not have come at a better moment for he, his family, that entire team. Hats off to all of them. We now head to Atlanta next weekend to start the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. It should be absolutely wild down there. So let me know in the comments what you think about the race, what you would rate it, Chase Briscoe winning. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.